In a secluded laboratory, a cadre of America's most brilliant engineers and military strategists converged to give life to an unprecedented marvel of modern warfare, the Boeing X-51 Wave Rider. This was no ordinary military endeavor. The challenge of generating thrust with a supersonic combustion ramjet, commonly known as a scramjet, is akin to lighting a match in the eye of a hurricane and maintaining its flame. First pioneered by NASA in 1991, the X-51 scramjet engine defies conventional wisdom, harnessing fuel and an oxidizer to unleash an extraordinary burst of power while soaring at hypersonic speeds. Achieving Mach 5, five times the speed of sound, promises to redefine the very concept of combat distance. It hints at a future where missiles possess the capability to traverse continents in mere minutes. The stakes for the Wave Rider project were nothing short of astronomical, and the risks were immense, as only four prototypes were ever brought into existence. The final tests could make or break the future of U.S. aerial power. Hypersonic Dream The realm of infinite possibilities of high-speed technology and a multifaceted team led by the United States Air Force Research Laboratory gave rise to the X-51A Wave Rider, an experimental endeavor poised to redefine hypersonic flight. The Wave Rider, a nearly wingless cruiser designed to surf its own shockwave, hence its moniker, measures 25 feet long and weighs around 4,000 pounds. This craft is engineered for total control at supersonic speeds, even while gliding without propulsion. This unmanned, autonomous, scramjet-powered hypersonic flight trial demonstrator was conceived in 2004 and made from collaborative efforts by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, Boeing Integrated Defense Systems, Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne, and NASA. The backbone of its capabilities lies in its scramjet engine technology. Short for supersonic combustion ramjet, scramjet is an air-breathing propulsion system designed to operate efficiently at hypersonic speeds. Unlike traditional jet engines, scramjets do not have moving parts for compression, relying on the forward motion of the vehicle to compress the incoming air. This allows for faster air intake and combustion, enabling the engine to operate at extremely high speeds, potentially as high as Mach 20. Beyond the Blueprint With the groundwork of scramjet technology laid in the multi-million dollar collaborative effort, the focus turned to a comprehensive flight program aimed at validating its potential in the real world. Because the Wave Rider program is merely a technology demonstrator and not a prototype, only four X-51As were built for the Air Force. In an effort to control costs and focus most of the funding on the engine, test vehicles would not be recovered. There was no room for error. Air Force officials envisioned the X-51A program as a groundbreaker for knowledge required to develop future hypersonic aircraft or weapons, hypersonic intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, and more. Other key technologies to be demonstrated within the program included thermal protection systems materials, airframe and engine integration, and high-speed control and stability. The X-51A made its first captive carry flight on December 9, 2009. A B-52 carried the X-51A under its wing for high-altitude performance, handling qualities, and testing communications and telemetry systems. With this, the Wave Rider was ready. Edwards Air Force Base in California stirred with anticipation as the aircraft approached its debut flight. Breaking record. The X-51A Wave Rider made history when it achieved the first supersonic combustion ramjet-powered hypersonic flight on May 26, 2010. The model was launched from Edwards Air Force Base, carried under the left wing of an Air Force Flight Test Center-owned B-52 Stratofortress. It was released when the bomber flew at 50,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean Point Mugu Naval Air Warfare Center Sea Range. After discharge, an Army tactical missile solid rocket booster accelerated the X-51A Wave Rider to about Mach 4.8 before it was jettisoned. Once the X-51A was free of its booster and interstage, its engine ignited, initially on a mix of ethylene and JP-7 jet fuel, then exclusively on the latter, which was also used on the SR-71 Blackbird. The flight reached an altitude of 70,000 feet and a peak speed of Mach 5. 
Simultaneously, onboard sensors transmitted this valuable data to a nearby U.S. Navy P-3 used for monitoring, as well as ground systems back at the Air Force bases. The flight was terminated after about 200 seconds of engine operation when an anomaly resulted in a loss of telemetry. With the test completed, the vehicle was destroyed by flight controllers on command. Despite the slight anomaly, this can be considered the inaugural flight of a hydrocarbon-fueled scramjet. According to program manager Charlie Brink of the Air Force Research Laboratory at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, quote, we equate this leap in engine technology as equivalent to the post-World War II jump from propeller-driven aircraft to jet engines. With three tests remaining, the possibilities were endless for this groundbreaking device. Trials of Fire Following an extensive analysis of flight data from the initial trial, there were slight modifications to strengthen the three remaining X-51As. The second test flight of the vehicle took place on June 13, 2011. However, during the transition to JP-7 fuel, an inlet unstart occurred. According to NASA, an inlet unstart occurs when the shockwave moves too far out in front of the air inlet, causing a momentary lapse in airflow to the engine. Scramjet engines depend on exact shockwave movements and engine airflow to function correctly. Because no wind tunnel can move air at hypersonic velocities, successful hypersonic testing is extremely difficult. While there was an attempt to restart and reorient to optimal conditions, it was unsuccessful, and the aircraft made a controlled crash into the Pacific Ocean off the California coast. Disappointed but undeterred, program manager Brink stated that this data, regardless of the outcome, serves to learn more about the technology, only bringing them closer and closer to success. In August 2012, the third hypersonic flight test was conducted, this time with the goal of achieving Mach 6 speed for five minutes. The unmanned X-51A Wave Rider vehicle separated from its B-52 Shredder Fortress bomber mothership as expected and fired up its rocket booster, but a control fin failure sent it plummeting into the sea about 16 seconds into the flight, all even before getting the chance to ignite the scramjet engine. While all the data showed the team had created the right conditions for engine ignition, this test flight marked the third demonstration of the X-51A program and the second major setback for the project. With only one attempt left, team members at the Air Force Research Laboratory had no choice but to conduct an in-depth evaluation to determine the exact cause of Tuesday's flight test failure. Last chance. Nearly a year later, the fourth and final X-51A Waverider model was prepared for flight on May 1, 2013. There was no room for error on the last opportunity for this experimental hypersonic aircraft to prove its worth. Accelerating the craft to more than five times the speed of sound, the Air Force's X-51A traveled more than 230 nautical miles in just over six minutes. After burning its four-minute fuel supply and according to plan, the X-51A was crashed into the Pacific Ocean and destroyed. The test vehicle returned 370 seconds of flight data, making the final mission the most successful and meeting all the experiment's objectives. The X-51A program's four attempts, though varying in degrees of success, gathered over nine minutes of information. This was a groundbreaking accomplishment, showing that using hydrocarbon fuel in air-breathing, high-speed scramjet propulsion is indeed possible. Though no plans exist to create additional X-51A vehicles, officials have stated that the $300 million technology demonstrator program, initiated in 2004, leaves an important legacy. It confirms that the technology has advanced to a stage where it can be considered for practical applications. Program manager Brink proudly stated, quote, I believe all we have learned from the X-51A Wave Rider will serve as the bedrock for future hypersonics research and ultimately the practical application of hypersonic flight. Thank you for watching Dark Tech. If you found the X-51A Wave Rider program's journey as fascinating as we did, hit that like button, drop a comment, and share with a fellow tech enthusiast. Stay connected for more cutting-edge content. Don't miss out. Subscribe to this and all the Dark Documentaries channels for a deep dive into the world of technological marvels.